Hello, everybody, and welcome to Getting APIs to Work. Today, we talk about API ops, and we'll have Daniel Kotzot of CodeCentric with us. Hey, Daniel, thanks for joining. Hi, Eric. Thanks, thanks for having me. It's good to talk with you a little bit about API ops because I think it's something that we see more and more, and a lot of people are maybe wondering what this is all about. So to dive into it, let's just compare it with API management or API lifecycle management. I think these are concepts that people hear a lot about, they're a little bit familiar with. How would you compare or contrast API ops with those topics? Yeah, API ops is, I would say, some kind of glue actually to, to really, to really put the things together. So when, when we have API management, we, we have this life cycle around, which everybody sh should know about. And then we have this API, uh, this general API life cycle, with, which is not really automated in this way. So with API ops, we go also in the, in the direction of automation in this case, to really make sure that everything's work is working out of the box actually. So, so it's really some kind of glue to, to make all the things working together hopefully smoothly. <laughs> hopefully smoothly, yes, that would yeah. be good. Um, but in that case, I would say it, it is kind of similar or a little bit similar to, to DevOps, which is also this idea of automating things so that you can more easily get from whatever you work on to actually running things that you can deploy and get feedback about and, and these kind of things, right? Yeah, this, this is actually the, 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 the main idea. So coming from, from the DevOps side, looking at people, looking at processes, and, and then having this, this lean approaches to, towards this, and which will end then in automation, actually, because to, to, make it, to make it faster, actually, to have this speed and quality thing, what we call it at Codecentric, actually, to, to make everybody in a, with a better time to market, actually. Mm -hmm. Speed and quality, I like that. I, I remember... Back from the days, the microservices book um, that, that the old CA team was writing, and they also had speed and, and safety, I think, was their thing. But it, same kind of thing, right? You, you, have, you want to make sure that you can move fast and that you don't yeah. break things. <laughs> yeah, and this is, this is actually just an adoption to it. So, so we have this somewhere saying we, we want to, 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 to deliver with speed or our customers should deliver with speed and then also with quality, which, which is mostly important too, to really be a player in the market actually, also in regards to, to the API economy and all the stuff. Mm -hmm. So when you put something in place that fulfills this idea of being an API ops solution or whatever you would call it, like what's your typical tool set, so to speak? What, what, what is it that you use when you are deploying, so to speak, API ops? So, so, the, so the main part of, of API ops is actually pipelining and, and having um, a, current, a control versioning system available. So this, this is the, the main part, the base actually to, to move on. And then we go into validation stuff, we go into testing stuff, and then it's actually in the end, it's the deployment part. That's, that's the most mm -hmm. common. Having tools like Spectral or Vacuum for, for validation stuff, having something like Portman for the testing side, and then, depending actually on uh, on what uh, on where we would like to deploy, we need some other tooling. So sometimes we, when we work with um, customers who are who have Kong available, we need something like um, yeah, like DAG or Inzo to to make everything as smooth as as possible to to have this this automated automated pipeline available actually. Mm -hmm. So when you use API ops, you always you kind of throw in the tooling that that works best in in those particular cases. I'm wondering. It seems to me that with a lot of customers, I think it should be relatively easy for them to at least embrace the concept because they I, I, I would guess they know it from the DevOps space. Is that something that you see where people are saying, okay, I, I get it, I, I should probably do this, or do you have a lot of explaining to do? Yeah, it, it, it depends where the customer actually is in, in, in this life cycle of APIs and, and having an understanding what is development, what is designing and, and where to put it all together actually. But but it really depends on the customer. Sometimes we, we work with people in other projects that saw a blog post or read a blog post of mine, saw, saw some conference stuff from, from me actually, and then come, come back to me saying, yeah, we already adapted to things. It's totally mm -hmm. due to our needs, and we really adapted the wording, which is really, really impressive in that way, saying, okay, 
That was not intended by myself, actually, that somebody uh, takes the whole wording with uh, with them, actually. But it's good to see that it that it's working in, in, in that direction. So it really depends on, yeah, on, on the on, on the customer itself, actually, we, we, we are working with. Mm -hmm. But if, if, if we want to talk to our viewers a little bit, why they should check out, so to speak, API ops and maybe think about what they're doing and how it compares, what do you think they should think about most in terms of, you know, do I have potential where API ops could help me? Or is, is there something where you would say this is a good way to get um, to get a little bit an introduction into the topic? Yeah, you, you will find things on, on, on the concentric block uh, somewhere. There's a lot of things on, uh, on LinkedIn, actually, uh, what I'm writing about, uh, about API ops, actually. And in the end, it's just adapting existing tooling that exists so for for every one of us pipelining should be known by everyone actually so how to build up a pipeline and whatever you, you you do with gitlab and github so this this kind of things really work out of the box so you just have to look for the tooling so that you think about validation so that you need some kind of rule sets when you have an api guideline so that that's always a good starting point looking at an api guideline and then think about how to validate the, the description that will be written by the teams actually, and then make sure that they really adapt the guidelines and don't do things mm -hmm. and uh, build some new stuff and work actually against the guidelines. This is, this is mostly important to, to really think about and even also adapt things all over the way actually to make sure that you're really on track all the time. So if somebody has a good idea from the teams, please talk with them and and maybe adapt that this idea to to the to the pipeline because it will help others actually so this is this is mostly important so so these this concept of um, api ops is really open minded so it shouldn't be a closed shop actually but it really mm -hmm. depends on yeah, the experiences of the team actually and um, it has to evolve over time i think that's the, one of the most important things to to really think about when adapts mm -hmm. helps I, you know, like just given how quickly the API space evolves and how many new tools we see coming in, right? Like new things you can do. I'm guessing that this is probably one of the constant things that you will see with these things, right? That you, over time, you will th maybe ex switch out some tool, throw in a new tool, and, and that yeah. definitely should be something that you can do easily. Okay, um, then, um, thank you so much. I think that was a, a good introduction to the topic. I'll link a whole bunch of resources from the description. Yeah. I think you've written about this extensively over the last couple of months and even years, I think. And um, I hope that our viewers um, will find it interesting and check it out. Thanks so much for joining. Yeah, thanks for having me, Eric. Thanks, everybody, for watching. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. And with that, we're done for today. Keep getting APIs to work. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.